Hello there, everybody, and good morning, good early morning. It's time for Coffee Shop Thursday. Hmm. Good stuff, good stuff. Say, um, what I like to do is more, more or less do our first thoughts on a Friday here at, at Coffee Shop Thursday, because um, Friday being Christmas Eve, we want to do something a little bit different. So let's talk about the gospel text that's coming up. It's from Luke 2 verses 41 through 52, and yeah, some interesting things about it. This is uh, the only childhood narrative about Jesus. Yep, the only one. He's 12 years old, and his parents go to the temple, as they um, always do for the Passover. It says there that every year they went to Jerusalem for the Passover, Hey, that's pretty cool. And you know, Jesus went along with him. And this was one when he now was 12 years old. And yet to remember, 12 years old, he's just about ready to become an adult in that society. So keep that in mind too. Well, it's all over. The festival's over and they all start journeying back. Now, the thing you did back then was you never traveled alone. You always went with a, a pack of people. And what was that pack of people? They were your good friends and your relatives from your hometown. And they estimate it would have taken about oh, um, four days for them to get to Jerusalem, averaging about 15 miles a day. Okay, so now they have to go and make the return trip. And uh, after they'd only gone for about a day, they look around and there's no Jesus. No Jesus. Terrible parents, why weren't you watching him? Don't forget, he's 12 years old. He's almost an adult. They figured he's just with some of the other gang and who knows how many there were. Must have been uh, quite a few of them traveling together. So they decided, hey, we better go back and see what's up. He's got to be back there in Jerusalem. And they, they went there and now three days later, they finally find him. And where is he? in the temple oh wouldn't i mean how many of us would yell at our kid if we went looking for them and we couldn't find them for three days because why they were in the church sitting there talking with the pastor and other people maybe they went to a noel bible study oh man okay so he, there he is talking with the teachers. They're listening to them. This is it. They, he asked them questions, and everybody's just fascinated with Jesus and and his responses and how much he knows, how much he understands. Um, and when his mom and dad uh, watched him, they were astonished as well. But then she says, "Child." Why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I, we've been looking for you in great anxiety. Here's the interesting thing. These are the first words of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. Are you ready? Why were you searching for me? <laughs> Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Oh, Lord, I can't believe that's what those are the first words of Jesus, the first words out of his mouth in the Gospel of Luke. Why? Why are you looking for me? It says they didn't understand. So they came back to Nazareth. He was obedient to them. And here's the next thing. It says, Mom treasured all these things in her heart. I just want to start singing the song, Mary, did you know... That, I, I wonder if that was the inspiration for this song, Mary. Did you know? I think even then she knew, hey, there's something about this kid. She knew it when he was born. Now she really, really gets it. There's something different about him. I find it fascinating that um, there's an emphasis made twice in this passage as to who whose son Jesus is. Did you catch it? The first part is 
when Mary says, child, why have you treated like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you. Your father, Joseph. And Jesus in his reply says, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? God. Hmm. Isn't that fascinating? Both of those occur in this passage. Oh, what else do we see in here? Oh, this whole part about I must be in my father's house. You know, that's very ambiguous. It's in fact, it's not just very ambiguous. It's super ambiguous in the Greek. It could mean I had to be in my father's house. It could also mean I had to be about my father's business, as the King James Version puts it. And that might be one place that the King James Version has it over the Revised Standard Version. It had to be about my father's business. Hmm. Wow. This is kind of a fascinating thing. Now, how many of you here... Good coffee. How many of you here would put up with an answer that, that Jesus gave, that he gave to his mother right there? Um, why have you been looking for me? <laughs> like, don't talk to me like that, son. But it's the truth. Why were you looking? Don't you understand? Hmm. Don't you understand? And they didn't understand. Now, what's interesting is another thing here that you don't really pick up in the English, but in the Greek, you see it. And it's something we're going to run into from now all the way through the Gospel of Luke as we study it this year. Did you not know that I must, that I must keep that in mind. That can also be translated. It is necessary. It is necessary. Time and time again, we're going to see that word. It's day in the Greek. It is necessary for me to be doing this. This is the first time we see it. It's going to pop up an awful lot in the Gospel of Luke. Oh, yeah. Powerful, powerful passage. The only time that we see anything about Jesus in his childhood getting ready to move into adulthood. Fascinating passage that we will have on the Sunday right after Christmas Day. Yeah. And one day, Jesus grows up 12 years. <laughs> well, God's blessings be with you. And seeing as we're on the cusp of Christmas Eve, hopefully you're getting all your stuff done that you need to do. And if not, oh, good Lord help you. God's blessings be with you this day.